Welcome, welcome, welcome. What is up, party people? We are on. It is time to discuss all things residential real estate all across the DFW Metroplex. We're taking your questions at 214-310-0008. Or as always, you can engage with us on the internets, every single one of them. You can just Google my name, Todd Tremonti. You can go to toddtremontiteam.com. Or you can find us on all the social things, but generally searching my name, Todd Tremonti, Todd Tremonti Realtors, Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team. And that is about as many times as I'm going to say my own name for a while. Welcome to the show. we got a full studio. We even have Phoenix the Intern. No microphone quite yet, but Courtney's fired up about it. Uh, she mentioned something about being excited about having smart people around earlier. Yep. Ian and I noticed that we're always around, and she's never said that to us. So congratulations, Phoenix. I think you're exactly what it's finally nice to have somebody that's intelligent around me. It, it felt like a barb, to be honest, when she said it. Uh, may or may not recover soon. Welcome to the show, folks. We got lots to cover. All sorts of awkward and super cheesy Halloween-themed things on your way. Courtney's wearing an orange shirt. It's a great show! Let's get into it. Hey, you want me to go? I would love it if at this point you join join the show. That'd be good. Sure. Hey, this first segment is brought to you by Patrick Glaris and his team at Cardinal Financial. If you're looking to uh, refi, if you're looking to get a mortgage, maybe you're looking to get a second property, you go to patrickglaros.com. You can start an application right there on his website, patrickglaros.com, G-L-A-R-O-S, NMLS number 308804. You can call him at 972-728-3420. And there are only 56 days and eight hours until Christmas, Todd. Well played, sir. I actually just locked in a mortgage with uh, Patrick Glaros myself. Um, I'll just say, not my favorite rate I've ever locked in, but always a great experience with his team make it clean and simple very very clear with all the options we did make a couple of strategic options they had some things available uh, that i wasn't even aware of initially that worked out and ended up being our choice our preference so patrickglaros.com was it scary working with patrick it wasn't scary it was it was like more christmas than halloween to be (laughs) honest with you that's good i felt like i really had someone to depend on anyway uh that went well we, uh, we have moved into our new home. That's exciting. Feel free, we could talk about that a little if you want, but I know you've got other things you'd like to talk was about. Was that scary? Uh, yes, that was. Okay. Moving, is, moving is typically a little spooky. Uh, even if you're super fired up about where you're going, you know, the, the day of is always an adventure. Absolutely demands a good mover if you're moving any significant amount of size. We, we had a good mover. If you're looking for a mover, let us know. We can connect you. Um, but we were so excited about where we were going that it wasn't a bad experience at all. But, uh, you know, the days where you're like, every question is, where is that? Where, which box is that in? Tough. Not ideal. It's chilling thought. You it's don't know where something is. Spooky. Terrifying. I would, I would say it's, uh, no, I don't have another one. Okay. Hey, we're going to do some, uh, some scary questions. I was so going to say Halloween, Halloween but I didn't want to say it. <laughs> Courtney's howling with So laughter. far, this show's been scary organized. Let's do it. It is organized! Clearly. Y'all hey, need to perk up! If you have a question, give us a call or text 214-310-0008. Uh, we've already got a few lined up, but first... Find out what your home would sell for right now and under a minute at ToddTremontiTeam.com. Perfect. You should. Excellent transition. If you haven't done it this year, you really need to. On the sound on the, the soundboard, that button is orange. Just so you know. <laughs> also Halloween thing. Very Halloween. We are yeah. crushing it. Nailed hey, it. let's talk about I'm gonna read the minds of some of our listeners, okay? Do it. I'm gonna pull out some of their questions that they're scared to ask. Exactly. <laughs> That's what's going on inside people's <laughs> heads when they think, should I ask this question? Oh, it's gonna keep playing. That's fun. Um, that's what people think. Okay. So here's the first one. Okay. Will you reduce your commission? Nope. Oh, was that just a, that was a bit, um, you want commentary on that? Yeah. Okay. Listen, most agents will say yes to this question. And as much as that sounds like what you want someone to say, it's not, um, 
Now, if you have a friend or a family member that's willing to work really hard for you and they're full time and they've got a dedicated team and staff and systems of technology to drive world class value for you and they've proven that over a long period of time, you know, that's that's great. That that's a favor. That's a friend truly legitimately helping you. But when you're looking for world class value, it value requires compensation. That's how the world works. That's how business and professionals work. So the, the phrase you get what you pay for is not always true, but when it comes to professional services, it usually is, right? The higher priced attorney tends to be better, have a better track record, better results, better resources. You know, the specialized surgeon that, that makes massive differences in your life is not the cheapest medical professional you're gonna visit, right? So, um, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily arguing for like, go find the most expensive you can find, although at times that is a short route to quality and, and results. What we're saying is, um, as scary as it is to potentially pay what feels like a really big commission, you need to think about the value and the exchange of value. And that's true for anything, not just real estate. Um, but historically speaking, you know, if you pay more for something, it, it lasts longer, it's more durable, it's more reliable. Again, not universally true, but a fairly reliable uh, track, you know, tracking mechanism. The residential real estate world has been really gunked up for two and a half to three generations where the assumption is that everyone charges the same thing and everyone does the same thing. The reality is neither of those things is true. It's actually against the rules, against the license law for agents to all fix their prices and charge the same thing. So we always use the same phrase, all commissions are negotiable and not set by law. Now that doesn't mean an agent, individual agent has to negotiate their commissions. That means as an industry, everyone can choose their own fee and deliver their own value. If you sign a representation agreement with someone, there are some requirements, you know, that's an exchange of an agreement to offer certain services for certain values. But there's a lot of confusion about exactly what an agent does and exactly what that compensation goes to. We believe that should be a conversation you have up front, not something you just kind of assume or hope or expect or wish for. So I'll just leave it at that and say a lot of agents are scared to get that question and a lot of buyers and sellers are afraid to ask that question. That should not be a fearful thing at all. That should be a grown up adult professional conversation. If you're getting a bid for someone to paint your house, everyone knows we're gonna talk about what are you gonna do and then what do you charge for that? And I might talk to two or three painters and get bids and I might or might not choose the most expensive or the cheapest based on what I get for that fee. It should be the same way with a real estate agent. Okay, what's your fee? What do I get for that? Am I comfortable with that? Do I believe you can get me the results that you say you can get? And then we will or will not do business based on that. And agents should not be scared of that and consumers should not be scared of that. It's the assumptions that get everyone in a lot of trouble. And there's a lot of trouble in the residential real estate industry. Perfectly answered. Well, thank you so much, sir. Welcome. Hey, is it okay? You let me know when you're ready for me to ask a question. I'm not sure I am, but go ahead. Okay. Is it okay to decorate my home for the Christmas holiday when I'm selling in like November? Okay. I want to be very careful with this answer because you and I, sir, are on the same page that Christmas is a holiday. You should feel free to celebrate all year long. Yeah, but yeah. The general... This is where, in some ways, we are playing to the populist opinion, right? So what do most people do? Most people, whether or not they celebrate Christmas as like a faith holiday, the season of the Christmas holidays typically typically starts after Thanksgiving, right? So that would be my recommendation broadly and generally when you're thinking about a home that's on the market. If your home is decorated for Christmas after Thanksgiving, our, our experience and it's not definitive research, but decent data says it does not hurt. It might actually help a little your ability to sell your home between Thanksgiving and New Year's Day. Christmas decorations are fine. Hanukkah decorations are fine. Whatever holiday decorations, as long as they're tasteful and appeal to the broad audience. It's the same thing with what color do you paint your dining room? You may love teal. That's not one of the most popular dining room colors. So as long as you're in the spectrum of really popular, open, generally ex accepted, people are, you know, are drawn to it or at least accept it, you're going to be fine. And as far as timing, 
that's Thanksgiving to New Year's Day for Christmas decorations. When do you put up your Christmas stuff, Tom? Now, I will. Gonna, s- I'm going to poll. I'm going to ask everybody. I'm going to answer a question you didn't necessarily ask. I I will okay. start listening to Christmas music probably after Halloween. Okay, that's just music. Me in the car, my kiddos, mostly my girls. Uh, as far as decorations, it's it's going to be around Thanksgiving. We're probably before Thanksgiving a little, and then the big guns come out after Thanksgiving, and then they'll stay up until New Year's Day ish. We're not afraid to be a little before that. Uh, my wife does like fall decorations, which, you know, I'm not exactly sure what he, that even means. It's not Halloween. It's not Thanksgiving. It's just fall. Pumpkins. Seasonal. True. There's like, there's dead grass in the house at times. Connie, yeah. what's straw, you? You could call it straw. You could call it hay. It's decorative. People, like, there are farmers that raise, you know, hay for consumption of agriculture, like animals. And All stuff. right, we're getting away from the Christmas. No, no. Piece. But then, the, then they are like, "Well, increase the price nine times because these these people are going to buy this stuff for like the month of October, November." I am a Christmas decorations go up the day after Thanksgiving and they come down like Christmas oh, afternoon. Take the, uh, <laughs> muted. That's Sorry, un- she listen. no longer gets a microphone. Listen, here, let me let's expand on that. Phoenix, grab a microphone. This is important. We need your opinion. I think we could all generally agree. We can support that they go up after Thanksgiving. I don't have an issue if you put them up earlier. No, no, I don't have an issue if you do. But I I can, if you're like, if your policy is, hey, as soon as Thanksgiving's over, we get Christmas up. Cool. I, I can support that. Now, here's the question, Phoenix. Are you okay? Christmas Day is, it's not over yet. We're still enjoying the fun, familial, seasonal gift giving and getting vibes of Christmas, and someone starts tearing it down. I would not be okay with that. Not okay yeah. at all. Let me ask not- you this. Let me ask you this, Phoenix. How would you feel? I know somebody that does this. They have a four foot tree that stays up year round. It's been up for about three and a half years now, maybe four. He knows someone and it now very is, it's well. Now the, uh, it's it's now the vacation tree. It's weird. It has ornaments on it from all of our vacations that are Christmas themes. It also becomes things like the St. Patrick's Day tree, the Easter tree. How do you feel about that? Might be a little scary. Yeah, it's scary. Might be a little scary. Like you roll, How do you feel you roll about- into someone's house and you see a Christmas tree that they are currently referring to as a Valentine's tree. You're like, all right, Christmas tree's still up in February. A little late, but you know, whatever. How do you feel then about a 10-foot tree that September. stayed up all year round no. that we've now just called a house plant? No. Wait, I said we. Oh, <laughs> gave it away. <laughs> he knows a guy. We. Shoot. Okay. Is that uh, true? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Year round, at least one tree in their home is up. Year round. And they do it's now. Not, I will say, no decorations on it. I will Just say, the tree. they plant. they do start referring to it as the Valentine's tree yeah. and the St. Patrick's tree, Easter tree, yeah, July Fourth tree. No. Final thoughts, Phoenix. Just festive. No. If you can disguise it well enough, I'll tolerate it. My brother, Amen. <laughs> He'll allow it. All right, moving on. All right, uh, is it okay, Todd, to keep my pet Burmese python? Remember, these are the questions people are afraid to ask. Is it okay to keep my pet Burmese python visible for home showing? Listen, I'm glad that this person wasn't afraid to ask. The answer is no, it is not okay. Is it legal to have a pet Burmese python? I, I'm not aware of that. No, 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 I'm no. not a I'm not a Wait. animal specialist. I will say this. Wait, really? You can't leave your snake if in you, the house? If, I, if, I, if my name is, if I'm helping you sell your home or anyone here that works You're with me. You're packing up. I'm telling you, hey. The reptiles. Carl, the Burmese python, has got to go or be f- phenomenally well secured and out of sight during showings. And let me just ask you, Courtney, why might that be my policy? Now, I can't make someone do that in their home. That would be my advice, my recommendation. Why would that be my, you? this is very clear. Why would that be my advice? Well, it's scary. Because that snake is going to scare the urine out of people. Yeah. I'm talking no freak. I can't even think about that house because right. there's holy a snake. smokes. Now that doesn't mean that the, the snake is even dangerous, but the vast majority of American people, homeowners, when they see a snake are physically uncomfortable. Hello. Are, Hello. Yeah, <laughs> count me in the club. <laughs> Right now, I'm an, I'm an, like I, I understand intellectually that that snake probably can't get out of that enclosure, but I'm I would rather be in a different room. I don't want to be in this room, and I have now subconsciously or consciously put 
put that energy, that opinion, that feeling, that that hesitancy in and around or on your house. So does this just apply to all pets? It applies to everything I said in the first question, which is what is the stereotypical response to this? Do most people enjoy holiday decorations at this time of year? Then you should be fine. Mm. Do most people enjoy being in the same room as a massive snake? Then you should be fine. Answer to the snake question is no. Most people don't. Have you ever been to the zoo and you see the snake exhibit and people like physical posture, people just kind of tighten up like, I don't want to get close to the glass. Uh, we were outside. And you all know that I'm a man of the outdoors, right? Love camping and all right, that stuff. Right, right. Nope. Uh, we were hanging outside with our neighbors like two weeks ago and one of the boys that was outside, one of the kiddos found a snake that was about four inches long. How fast did uh, you run? Oh, I went inside, locked the door <laughs> and saw that snake was across the street and in somebody else's yard. Google Todd Trimani and check out over 700 five-star reviews. <laughs> Let me tell you about Goosehead Insurance. That is not scary. DP takes great what care a of his transition. people. He takes care of the people. His team are phenomenal. DP.Lambert, DP.L-A-M-B-E-R-T at Goosehead.com is how you can reach out to DP. You can call him at 214-614-8595. He is going to take a look at your home insurance, your auto insurance. He's going to figure out how to get you the most coverage for the absolute best price. He will take great care of you, him and his team. DP.Lambert at Goosehead.com. One might say, you know, he'll protect you from the fear of loss of home or auto. Yeah. Damage. You will. An accident. Him and his people. Unforeseen expenses. Yep. DP.Lambert at Goosehead.com. Okay, folks, if you're thinking about buying or selling your home anytime in the next year, this is the right time of year to have those strategy conversations. Fourth quarter, first quarter, kind of end of the year, beginning of the year, um, when the assumption is that most people are going to make their move spring, summer. You know we like fall, winter for that. There's real strategy there. But as you're beginning to wind down your year and think about next year, what do we want to get done? What are our goals? What are we achieving? What do we not get done this year? What are we pre preparing for? We do what we call free strategy sessions. All you got to do is call or text us at 214-310-0008 or go online to toddtremontiteam.com. We'll get you squared away for a free strategy session. We can do that on Zoom. We can do that over the phone. It's best done sitting down over a cup of coffee or a glass of water or a Coca-Cola classic on the rocks, something like that, where we can literally just say, hey, here's what's going on. Here's what we think is going to happen. What's important to you? What's going on in your life? What are your timing sensitivities? What are your goals? Who all's involved? So that you're not just rolling around with a ton of fear and anxiety or uncertainty and you have confidence and a plan. We can get that taken care of for you whenever you like. 30 minutes to an hour of our time at no cost, no obligation required. We would love to add value for you, help you feel a little bit more settled and confident, and alleviate the fear of the unknown. All that can happen online at... DutchReminiTeam.com Quick one for you. Can I sell my home as is? You can. Yeah, so... Um, if, you, if you're working with us, we would virtually never use that language. But you absolutely can sell a home as is, where is, how is. Now, let me, let's me let pop quiz Phoenix again. Phoenix, grab that mic, brother. Here we go. Let's get Phoenix that mic. Pretty corny. Okay, if you heard this term, if I said, listen, hey, my house is for sale, but it's as is, what comes to mind? You might want to fancy it up a little bit. As is might sound bad so for a house. The, 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 the vibe you're getting is negative. It, you, yes. it might need work. It might be bad. Okay. Um, what if I were to say to you um, something along the lines of, uh, you know, great house, tons of potential in Plano, uh, price below market value? What is the vibe you get off of that? Positive, confident. Okay. So Phoenix is a teenager, just so everybody knows, high school student. Phoenix, the intern, doing a great job over here at the Taj Money Home Selling Team. So we're just getting a neutral, unbiased opinion of the language, right? So you go dropping as is, as is, where is, how is, non-negotiable, no reductions, no repairs going to happen. Immediately, the mind of a buyer is like, this person is difficult, this house is, has problems, and I'm going to come in very, very low. Meanwhile, if that is your attitude, but you're not announcing it to the world, and I get a call from an agent that says, hey, this house looks like it needs a lot of work. And I were to say to you, hey, let's work it out at a price where my seller 
doesn't need to touch it. We'll let your buyer handle all that the way they want, when they want, so that it could be the house that they want. My seller's not inclined. They're not in a situation where that's really the best option for them. Now we have an opportunity to work this out where everyone's happy. So I'm not saying this is universal, but almost every time that as is language is going to hurt the seller. So the question was, can I sell as is? Yes, you can. But no, we're not going to advertise as is or go with the traditional approach, which I would argue is a very lazy approach by real estate agents where they just lob it out there as is seller will perform no repairs. Do not ask for inspection requests or deductions like all of that says go away, go away, go away. We're super difficult. We're going to be hard to work with and it's not going to be a good deal. You can achieve the same outcome with a way better approach. There's a lot more to it than the language I just used. But yes, you can sell as is, but we're not gonna shout the words or type the words as is pretty much anywhere. Well, and a lot of this goes back to the same types of points that we were making with the first question of will you lower your commission, right? It's yeah. like, yeah, if you ask these questions and you get somebody that answers with a, with a straight up simple, like absolutely yes, yeah. then like you need to start rethinking, like is this person actually gonna be the best person to you know, to serve me and help me throughout the transaction. Well, to your point, it's the same thing as if someone can tell you their commission before you've had a conversation about the house or the situation. Yeah. Why, how would someone know the fee for a service when they don't know what the service is yet? Yep. It's not one size fits all. There's not one approach to every home for sale, even if it, even if the seller's in a situation where it is going to need to be as is. There's, there's a lot of different ways we would do as is, depending on your timing the condition of the home, the price of the home, location of the home, the situation, the market we're in, the type of buyer that's most ideal for that home now or for that home in its highest and best use condition. So all that to say, <clears throat> every situation is different. Therefore, the service provided in every situation is different. Therefore, the exchange of value is different. So all these things are case by case. That doesn't mean that you know no two are ever similar. It means no two should ever be the exact same. So a great agent or team or brokerage is gonna have tools they can call upon on a regular basis, but they're putting together a slightly different puzzle, a slightly different picture for each buyer, for each seller, for each market, for each um, day, you know, for every scenario. So all that to say, no, you, you can sell a home as is, but we're not gonna label it as is. If you're thinking about buying or selling anytime soon, just reach out to us at DutchMoneyTeam.com. If you have no idea right now of what your home is worth, find out what your home would sell for right now and under a minute at TajmaniTeam.com. And if we got rain this week, which we all did, and you don't know the condition of your roof, make sure you're checking those corners, make sure you're checking ceilings and joints and AC ducts and all those things. But the roof that's on top of your house happens to cover all the things inside of it. And if you don't know the condition of that, you are playing with fire. You are, it's riskier than it needs to be. Go to pmrroofing.com or call 469-409-ROOF. That's 469-409-ROOF. Ask for our buddy Jordan Collins. The guys over at PMR Roofing will take great care of you. We'll be right back after this with a little bit of an update on what is actually happening on the ground in DFW real estate and how folks are actually winning big when selling and buying, even at 8% interest rates right here in DFW. Welcome back. Welcome back, party people. We're taking your questions, 214-310-0008. We're also talking about the fear in the Dallas-Fort Worth real estate market right now. People are absolutely afraid to do what they truly want to do. There are people that want to upgrade. There are people that want to downsize. There are people that want to buy their first home. And we hear over and over and over that they are afraid to buy right now or afraid to sell and buy right now. Now, the word fear is not always the word used. Sometimes it's we're going to wait. And then when we drill down, when we have an opportunity to really be consultative with people, which is our approach, and we ask them really good thought provoking questions, what we discover is that it's fear. It's fear of making the wrong choice. It's not even that they can't afford it or that it isn't what they want to do. It's that they're afraid to look dumb. It's that they're afraid that they'll look back on a decision later uh, and not be really proud of it. <clears throat> I can tell you this, in all but one of those conversations that I've had in the last several months, and I'm talking maybe one out of 30, in all but one, 
after really truly evaluating the landscape of the market and the likelihood of future options, making the move now was their best option. Now there was one option where literally just financially that was not wise. They needed to just wait. It, there wasn't an obvious path forward, but buying and selling now was not wise. So they just stayed in their home and they're fine. But in every other, and I don't know how many it was, but probably 30 ish that I've had, the scenario was this, Hey, you know, if this happens, then that will happen. And, and the cause and effect scenario put them in a riskier, less financially advantageous or less enjoyable outcome. And at pretty much every scenario, except going ahead and making a move now. Now, I don't want to spend a ton of time today beating up the conversation about interest rates and home values and all those things. But ultimately, a lot of the scenarios in Dallas, Fort Worth right now look like whether rates go up or down, prices will probably continue to go up. Inventory is so absolutely low that people who are waiting are waiting to spend more. Whether it's less on rate or more on house, it doesn't really matter as much, but the outcome for most people, and it's not us telling, it's us providing data and most people coming to the conclusion that waiting to waiting to buy or waiting to sell and buy will actually be a more costly, uh, less enjoyable approach. We do have people that are making some compromises right now, right? Okay, maybe I won't you know, get the forever dream home, but I'll get a very comfortable, phenomenal home um, that I can be really, really proud of. So anyway, a lot of fear in the marketplace, a lot of education and conversations about what if, what happens if, what happens after, uh, with a lot of people, the vast majority coming to the conclusion that if they feel financially able and they want to move right now, they're doing what's best for their family and finding that it's actually probably best for their finances as well. I got some more scary questions we're going to get to, but before that, let me tell you about Patrick Glaros and his team at Cardinal Financial. PatrickGlaros.com is where you can go. You can start an application right there on his website. If you're looking to refinance, if you're looking to take out a mortgage, maybe you're looking for a second property and you want a lender that's going to call you back. Oh, scary when they don't call you back, eh, Courtney? Oh, I know, right? Chilling. Patrick and happen? his team will call you back. They will take great care of you like they do for so many of our clients, friends, family members, and us. We've all worked with Patrick as well. I have several times. Todd has for 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. PatrickGlows.com. That's where you're going to go to start an application. NMLS number. <laughs> oh, stumbled out of the gate. Still got through it. NMLS 308. number. 804-972-728-3420 is his phone number. As always, you can find all the recommended pros and vendors on the website, toddtramoneyteam.com. That's right. Lots going on in DFW right now, folks. Uh, you know, we don't have these Arctic tundra winters. Now, we've had our like so-called here snowmageddons here, here yeah. and there, but we don't have a real estate market shutdown of a winter. It just doesn't happen. As a matter of fact, You've heard me time and time again say that I think fall and winter are excellent times to buy and sell, especially if you're doing both. Uh, and I, that continues to be the case. Um, so lots of opportunity in the market right now, even though a lot of the news about the market is negative. So we don't need to break that down like we do every single week here. But if you've got questions, let us know. 214-310-0008 or find us online at toddtramonteteam.com. Is a real uplifting question that we got, Todd. Oh, boy. Do I have to reveal that there was a death in my home? In certain situations where there was a crime, uh, that has to be disclosed. Uh, uh, typically, that's done in the MLS, in the database where real estate agents would put your property. But yes, that does have to be disclosed if there was a crime involved. There's a little bit of nuance to that that we won't get into here publicly. But um, if someone peacefully goes in a very natural way, then that is not typically required to be disclosed. But if there's a criminal activity, specifically murder, that absolutely does uh, have to be disclosed and is absolutely in the spirit of Halloween and all the creepy grossness that comes with it. What advice do you have for anybody out there that is thinking about wanting to buy land and build on it? Okay. I've got, I have to be careful with this and I'm going to, I'm going to make sure Phoenix approves of this message because the intern is. What's legit. really weird is like, that's his actual last name, the intern. And then he's now interning. Yeah. It's, it's a phenomenal, that is it's spooky. a magical fit. Spooky. Okay. Here's the thing. Everyone expects the real estate broker to say, bye, bye, bye. Go now, go now, go now. But I wish I had like a thousand person 
studio audience right now, and I could truly survey the audience. I thought he was going to break into song with a little in sync right there. Um, here's the thing: raise your hand metaphorically if you wish you had bought land a long time ago. And all the hands go up, right? Or a home or investment property or whatever, right? So ultimately, here's the thing. Even if you're not like, boy, do I like farming and ranching. Like, I wish I had, I wish I owned land that I had paid 1995 pricing for, right? There's just almost no time in the history of the state of Texas, you know, at certainly in the last hundred years, where somebody thought to themselves, it would have been a really bad investment to have bought land a long time ago. The value of land in Texas has 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 phenomenally reliably gone up in value. Now, there, have there been periods, very short periods of unstable, you know, some dips and things? Yes, there have. But late 90s, early 2000s, we saw an accelerated growth in property values, land values, and it just almost has not slowed or stopped yet. There are places that within my lifetime were like $150 an acre and are now well over $10,000 an acre. And, and you couldn't get a logical agricultural return on that investment. It's, it's just purely speculative or the joy of owning land or the limited availability of it, even in Texas where we have a lot of land. So all that is packaged into my answer. And here is my answer. If you would like to buy land to build a home or buy land with a home, I, I would say you probably need to hurry up. Now, if you have unlimited resources, by all means, take your time. Do that whenever you like. But the value of these things are going up. Just within my 20-something year career here in North Texas, the the outer ring area where people look for entry-level homes on land has moved an hour as far as travel time. From the edges of you know Richardson and Saxe and Wiley to... Nevada and beyond, right? Um, way beyond. Uh, from like uh, West Fort Worth to past Weatherford, right? From uh, North Plano to way beyond Salina. So this is true in almost every direction, almost equally. Just the, the, the increase in the value and the distance needed to go to get into what people typically refer to as like affordable entry-level land purchase uh, has shown no signs of slowing its growth and, and rapid increase in value. So I would say hurry up. How about a yurt? Yurts are an option. Now, yurts are what we call an improvement. You add that to the land after you've bought it, and you certainly can. Former producer Mason, the young MG, currently constructing a pretty cool one, a pretty cool quality. Uh, I don't know the full diameter of that one, but it's probably a 25 or 30 foot Mm-hmm. Across, pretty good size yurt pretty as far as yurts go. Yeah. All right. Here you go. Ready? Next I question. I don't know. I do not know if I'm ready. Do solar panels raise perceived property values? Stand by. Let me find the scary button. Producer Courtney is verbally accosting Ian right now with the accusation of him being boring. She's waiting for me to do something. And oh, I'm just gonna I, keep I, her waiting. I have no, no idea. You already ruined it. Okay. Solar panels. Oh, I got you on solar panels. Here's the deal. My answer is coming very soon, and it is not about green energy. It is not about politics. It is not about the industry. It is about the buying and selling of real estate. And solar panels on houses complicate the buying and selling of real estate. I've actually, I'm not saying it couldn't happen because I'm sure that there could be a perfect buyer seller fit where somebody was like, oh my gosh, I'm, I love what you did with the solar. I'm all in. I want it. But Every transaction we have ever been a part of, and it's hundreds, eh, probably hundreds, at least close to a hundred, if not multiple, um, with solar. I mean, we've done thousands of transactions. Um, it's complicated the transaction almost every time a buyer has had to take over a lease or financing payments on the panels, and they didn't like the arrangement or the amount or the setup or the number of panels or the positioning of the panels. Um, there's insur there's issues with insurance and roofing. We get hail in our areas. The insurance uh, coverage typically does not pay to remove the solar panels and put them back on or to uh, replace broken solar panels. So there tends to be a significant unknown, well, we know it, but unknown at the time of purchase or leasing, additional expense and inconvenience to panels. 
And historically, I've seen them underperform the expectations that people had initially. I do think that part is improving. They are beginning to perform better and better. Some people are claiming that they are truly seeing a significant positive ROI on the investment in shorter periods of time than initially designed. But people just don't stay in homes as long as they used to. And the ROI on those panels, at least it used to be a very long ROI. I do think that's shortening a bit. I looked at the roofing material that is both shingle and panel. I strongly considered it. Uh, and we just could not make even remotely close financial sense to do it. I wanted to do it uh, with the big battery pack and all that. But um, no, I would say that should scare people more when it comes to buying and selling. Again, not about energy, not about politics or whatever, but that's just about the buying and selling of a home. Solar has been very problematic for the majority of sellers we've seen. Republic Title are one of the leaders in the industry when it comes to title, title insurance, taking care of clients, making sure that when you purchase a home, you are legally actually allowed to be the purchaser of the home would, and seller be, of the home. That would be helpful to know. Kind of an important you yeah. know, point that we need to make sure. I'm buying a house. Right. Is this in fact your house? To Correct. Sell? Yeah. Pretty mm -hmm. important piece of the process. Uh, look, they do everything at such a high level. I get so frustrated when I have title companies reach out after the transaction, oh, we messed this up, oh, we forgot this. It drives me absolutely loopy. Don't get that with Republic Title. RepublicTitle.com is where you can go. You can find out everything that they offer there. RepublicTitle.com, 972-423-8777. And go to ToddChamoneyTeam.com where you can find all of our recommended pros and vendors right there on the website. Bravo, bravo. We just had a conference. We did, in fact. Just have a conference. I think we're about recovered. Mm, TBD, I'll let you know. One of the things that we talked about at the conference was on wealth buildings. So what's, a, what's a takeaway that you can share with the radio listeners uh, on what you discussed on wealth building? Well, it's interesting. So I, I offered seven tips. They quickly turned into 13, and the feedback was actually really, really good. The, 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 the premise of my share with a one-hour keynote or whatever it was, was that wealth building does not have to be phenomenally complicated right? This is approachable for everyone. Now, everyone can define wealth differently. And I did talk about 12 different types of wealth, finances being number 12 on that list, right? There's health, there's relationships, there's other forms of wealth. To say, for me to look at someone and say, I'm a wealthy man, I'm typically not talking about finances. I'm talking about there, there are people in my life that I love and I have my health and I have opportunity and I live in a country where there's freedom and to do things and experience things and believe things. So all that being said, from the financial perspective, the feedback I got, the things people loved the most, uh, one of which was maximize your active income. Very popular on YouTube and social media and TikTok and all these places right now to talk about the side gig or generating passive income. By all means, I'm a big fan. I just haven't seen a lot of it. I've seen a lot of people say they're developing passive income in areas that are not very passive at all. I love real estate. I love owning real estate, but a lot of owning real estate is not completely passive. That doesn't mean you shouldn't own it. That just means you should have that accurately labeled. So we talked about using the cash we earn from active income, whether that's a salary, an hourly rate, commission income or whatever, but you go to work, you get paid. Using that money, that earned cash, that actively earned cash to then invest in other things that will generate more cash whether that's passive or semi-passive. If you own a rental property, I would normally call that semi-passive. It might even be mostly passive. There's some work to be done, but that's more efficient than a second, third, fourth, or fifth act full-time job. So you go to work, you earn that money, and then instead of spending it, you invest that money into something that will get you more and more money regularly. That could be owning stock, that could be owning dividend stocks, that could be owning bonds. Right now, that could be a decent savings account with a decent interest rate. That could be residential real estate, that could be commercial real estate, that could be being a lender in certain situations, that could be potentially, maybe, buying legitimately collectible items that can be bought and resold, but that's fairly active. So there's a lot going on there. But the, 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 the major feedback was actually from people that championed the idea that passive income is often not passive and that putting your time, energy, and focus into investing in yourself, building your skills and your abilities and your confidence and your work ethic to maximize your active income, to then reinvest 
um, that income by being very careful to live beneath your means so that there can be some extra, some leftover to invest in additional cash flow was some of the areas of uh, significant uh, positive feedback. We talked about dig- dividend kings and dividend aristocrats. Those are stocks that pay dividends that have proven track record of increasing the dividends they pay for 25 years or 50 years or or more. Um, fairly reliable investments in that regard. Um, renting a room, that you know, that kind of thing. Lots of other things we talked about, but those were some of the highlights based on the feedback. Glad you mentioned aristocrats, Todd. Aristocrats oftentimes like artwork. You a fan okay. of the arts? Okay. You know, I would say I am a fan of the arts from a distance. I you wouldn't f- say I'm the most informed artist. You have a favorite artist. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to refer to an illustrator of children's books named Chris Van Allsburg. Big fan. Google that if you're at a computer. Uh, you might have read some of his books. What about paintings? Do you have a fan of a favorite you ever heard of Peter? Paintings? You ever heard of Peter Lick? Nope. More of a photographer but does some really cool stuff with the development of his art so that light causes the images to respond differently to more or less light. Pretty cool. I understand not a painter. I've heard of Van Gogh. He's a painter. Mm. Banksy. Banksy. Yeah, Banksy. Quite the popular not quite graffiti artist. quite a painter, artist. but a graffiti artist. Yeah, Phenomenal. Yeah. See, I knew that. Hey, all of this is leading up to a very important question. I have a question. friend that's a high-end art dealer. Would you like to delay this question anymore? I mean, I feel like we've got a few minutes left, but we can go ahead and do all it. All right, okay. Is it okay to keep my collection of artistic, keyword, nude paintings hanging throughout my home? Scary question. I mean, this is uh, a scary let me, show. Let me it. restate the question for our Halloween-themed friends. Is it okay to display yep. my collection yep. of nude paintings? Artistic. Yeah, so classy is what you're saying. Correct. Tasteful. Yep. Nude paintings mm-hmm. during showings. Yes. I'm going to go with the answer no. Similar to the python. <laughs> it's up there with the python. Yep. Maybe less physically scary, uh-huh. but up there, again, we're going to go back to the stereotype filter of how do most people respond to this. Yep. I'm visioning mom covering all the kids' eyes and then slapping dad on the shoulder. That's how I see this playing out. Y'all don't look. Hey, quit looking. Get out of here. And now mom, who tends to be the primary driver in a lot of these real estate decisions, and not every buyer is a family. We understand that. But this is the stereotype we're going with, right? Now we have a woman who's one of the drivers, if not the driver of a lot of these decisions, who has a negative connotation or subconscious or subconscious uneasy vibes about the property. It was kind of a silly worded question, but it's actually a legit question. I've seen some pretty... Um, revealing risque revealing or risque maternity photos during showings where I was like, I get what they were doing probably would have advised they take that down, you know? And it wasn't, it wasn't inappropriate. It was just, eh, you're causing me to focus on the thing that I can't buy. You need to cause me to focus on your house. It's the same thing when I see a shelf in a house with like 417 Russian dolls. Okay. They collect those. That's fine. But now what I'm looking at and what I remember is the Russian dolls and not the size of the kitchen, which is what I wanted to buy. It's actually more than 417 because the inside there's right. going to be more. On the there's like five the per. So now we're like, how many Phoenix uh, 417 like times five? 2085, <laughs> yeah. I think, is the math there. You check me on that. Pierce High School. Okay. So um, probably less on the nudes, less on the snakes. Cool on the Christmas decorations as long as it's in the right time frame. But all of these questions are good questions that we actually get a lot of the time. If you have questions like that about should I remodel, should I add on, should I remove this wall, should I buy, should I sell, can I do both right now, give us a call. No obligation, no cost. We'd be glad to do a quick free strategy session with you on the phone or by Zoom or by all means, we'd be thrilled to grab a cup of coffee or you know, buy you a Topo Chico at the office. We have an office in West Fort Worth. We have an office in Richardson. Give us a call 214-310-0008, or you can find us online at touchremoneyteam.com. And don't forget, Google Todd Tremonti and check out over 700 five-star reviews. Can't leave any kids out. 
Find out what your home would sell for right now and under a minute at TodgeMoneyTeam.com. Hey, we got some rain recently. We also are heading into the time of year where at any moment we could have some freak flash freeze. Yes. And you need to know that your roof is in good shape. I want you to go to PMRRoofing.com. I want you to call 469-409-ROOF or ROOF, as David says, 469-409-ROOF. And ask for Jordan Collins and say, hey, man, I just I got to get my roof checked out before we head into the, you know, cold, wet stuff and make sure that I'm in good shape. If you're not in good shape, they're going to look you in the eye, shake your hand, tell you precisely what you need. They are not going to take advantage of you. But if you need something significant, they do great work at a fair price and they will be here next year if you need any follow up or warranty work or just somebody to check in on it again. Uh, they've been around for a long, long time. They do very, very good work. That's PMRRoofing.com. Ask for Jordan. And if you're looking for an English soccer team to follow, oh, Middlesbrough would be a great one because we've won seven in a row. So why not jump on the train? Come on. On the, the sc- on the scary theme, I'll say this team is scary to be a fan of because they are, man, are they up and down and up and down? It's true. Ooh. But right now, up, up, right up. Right now, we're on That's the That's all we're doing up is winning. the borough. See what I set you up for? Yep. All right, folks, uh, as we head further into fall and winter, do not believe the stereotype that you should stop, turn off your brain for real estate, and wait until spring and summer. There are major, major opportunities to take advantage of some proven strategies that are to the advantage of buyers and sellers and homeowners and upsizers and downsizers. Another thing is if you have no interest in moving, but you're thinking about a remodel or uh, you know, some major repairs. As we head into fall and winter, there tend to be some more financially advantageous options for bringing in great contractors. We can help you with that as well. Give us a call 214-310-0008 or online anytime at touchmoneyteam.com.